Hi students, yesterday we dealt with the illustration of canonical and simple formulation for a system of harmonic oscillators when treated classically. Today we are continuing the rest of this illustration when the harmonic oscillators are treated quantum mechanically. Here again we consider a system of n independent harmonic oscillators and as per the ca canonical and simple theory, we have to calculate the partition function of the system and using the partition function, the complete thermodynamics of the system can be determined. Now, to calculate the partition function of the system, QNVT, what we do is, as we did in the classical case, we find out the partition function of a single harmonic oscillator that is Q1VT and that Q1VT is raised to the power of n to get QNVT. Now how do we calculate Q1VT? When we consider the oscillators quantum mechanically, the partition function for a single harmonic oscillator is calculated as Q1VT is equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity e raised to minus beta capital E where capital E is equal to n plus half h cross omega that is the energy eigenvalue of a harmonic oscillator. When we consider the harmonic oscillators uh, or when we give the quantum uh, harmonic oscillators a quantum mechanical treatment we consider the energy eigenvalue n plus half h cross omega. So, we substitute Q1 is equal to summation of n equal to 0 to infinity e raised to minus beta n plus half h cross omega as is given here. Now, I take out the constant that is e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 into the summation of n equal to 0 to infinity e raised to minus n beta h cross omega or my q1 is equal to e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 into I expand the summation as e raised to minus n beta h cross omega when n equal to 0 the value becomes 1 I give n equal to 1 so that my term becomes e raised to minus h cross omega plus e raised to minus 2 beta h cross omega plus e raised to minus 3 beta h cross omega etc. So this represents an infinite geograph geometric progression whose summation is given as s infinity is equal to 1 by a minus r. Here a is the first term that is 1 and r represents the common ratio e raised to minus beta h cross omega so that my s infinity is equal to 1 by 1 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega. So q1 vt is equal to e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 divided by 1 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega. Therefore, the partition function of the total system QNVT is equal to e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 the whole divided by 1 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega the whole raised to capital N. This is represented as equation 1. Next, we write down the same partition function in a different form. Again, we start from Q1 Vt, that is the partition function for the single oscillator, that is equal to e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2, the whole divided by 1 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega. Now, divide numerator and denominator by e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 so that I get q1 vt is equal to 1 by e raised to beta h cross omega by 2 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2. Next, I have to represent this q1 vt in the sign h form so that I divide the numerator and denominator by 2 and I get Q1 Vt is equal to 1 by e raised to plus beta h cross omega by 2 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 the whole divided by 2 multiplied by 2. So that e raised to plus beta h cross omega by 2 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 the whole divided by 2 is sin h beta h cross omega by 2 multiplied by 2. 
so my q1 vt becomes equal to 2 sin h beta h cross omega by 2 the whole raise to minus 1 so the partition function for the entire system written in a different form as q n v t is equal to 2 into sin h beta h cross omega by 2 the whole raise to minus n this is represented as 2 now from the determined expressions for the partition function of the system we find out helmholtz function free energy a chemical potential mu pressure p entropy s internal energy u cv etc for the system helmholtz ener free energy a is calculated as a is equal to minus kt log of the partition function or a is equal to minus nkt log e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 the whole divided by 1 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega chemical potential mu is given as the derivative of a with respect to n and we get the answer like this pressure of the system is calculated as minus do a by do b since a has no dependence on v p is equal to 0 now we calculate the entropy of the system minus do a by do t that is equal to minus do by do t of i use the second form of the partition function that is nkt log 2 sin h beta h cross omega by 2 now on differentiating using product rule i get minus nk log 2 sin h beta h cross omega by 2 that is first i differentiate this t next next term plus the t into 2 sin h beta h cross omega by 2 log of 2 sin h beta h cross omega by 2 is differentiated as 1 by 2 sin h beta h cross omega by 2 derivative of sin 2 sin h is 2 cos h into beta h cross omega by 2 so that is differentiated because beta is equal to 1 by kt so i have to find that that derivative also so into h cross omega by 2k into minus 1 by t square or s is equal to nk into half beta h cross omega cot h beta h cross omega by 2 minus log 2 sin h beta h cross omega by 2 so s is determined next i determine the internal energy u u can be determined in a number of ways u is equal to a plus ts u is equal to do by do beta a beta u is equal to minus do by do beta log of the partition function and that is what we use here u is equal to minus do by do beta log i use the first form of the partition function e raised to minus beta h cross omega by 2 the whole divided by 1 minus e raised to minus beta h cross omega again we do it as i take n out minus n do by do beta log e raised log a by log b is done here log a by log b is log a minus log b log a minus log b and i differentiate these two terms separately with respect to beta so that when i do it i get the answer solution as u is equal to n into h cross omega by 2 plus h cross omega by e raised to beta h cross omega by 2 next and lastly we determine the specific heat at constant pressure which is equal to the specific heat at constant volume here calculated as cv equal to cp equal to do u by do t i differentiate and i get the detailed steps are given and i get the solution as nk beta h cross omega the whole square e raised to beta h cross omega by e raised to beta h cross omega minus 1 the whole square now here u is equal to n plus half h cross omega plus h cross omega there's a cross here h cross omega by e raised to beta h cross omega minus 1 now this is not in agreement with the equipartition theorem as per equipartition theorem the mean energy of mean energy per harmonic oscillator should be equal to kt but here the mean energy has some other terms in addition to kt that means 
uh, it is clear that the quantum mechanical oscillator do not ob obey the equipartition theorem so, so let us see if there is any range of temperature at which these oscillators obey the equipartition theorem at high temperatures beta h cross omega becomes beta h cross omega which is equal to h cross omega by kt this term becomes much 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 lesser than 1 because t has a very large value so that i can expand a raised to h cross omega by kt as 1 plus h cross omega by kt plus etc the higher order terms are neglected and i substitute here this equation that is 1 plus h cross omega by kt in, in the place of a raised to uh, beta h cross omega in the equation for u so that my u becomes n into h cross omega by 2 plus h cross omega by 1 plus h cross omega by kt minus 1 as per this equation or i take h cross omega common factor out so that n h cross omega is equal to half into kt by h cross omega here kt by h cross omega is much 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 greater than this half kt by because my temperature is very much high so that i can neglect this half and u becomes equal to n h cross omega into kt by h cross omega or u becomes equal to n kt that is at very very high temperatures the quantum mechanical oscillators also obey the equipartition theorem and finally we represent the quantum mechanical oscillator classical oscillator and planck's oscillator graphically that is i am plotting a graph between average energy and temperature and the third line represents the classical uh, oscillator that is average energy is directly proportional to t so that i get a straight line the second line represents the quantum mechanical oscillator or the schrodinger oscillator because there is an additional term here so it starts somewhere higher in the axis for average energy and the first line represents the planck oscillator that is the quantum mechanical oscillator is represented by such a graph because of the zero point energy term half h cross omega there now if the zero point energy term is equal to zero then the oscillator is called planck's oscillator and is it is represented by the first line so i think the quantum mechanical treatment of a harmonic oscillators to illustrate canonical ensemble formulation is clear to all of you and in the next class we'll deal with the statistics of paramagnetism thank you